Hey, and we are live. Can you hear me? Let's get the show started. Let's make sure you can hear me. Hi. And welcome to another Saturday. Can you hear me? Hi, yeah. Welcome to another Saturday of Entrepreneur Life. And we are streaming live on Facebook. And we are on 11 podcast platforms. So today, for all of our new listeners, um, I am Rose, your host of Entrepreneur Life. And I am here with my co-host. Hi, everyone. I'm Tamara with SWA Fire Consulting. And we do a show every Saturday from 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, where we bring in all types of great guests in their entrepreneurship. And we are really looking forward to this show. So just to tell you a little bit about what we do, um, to all of our listeners and who have been following us for some time, thank you so much for following us, for um, tuning in every Saturday um, at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, to watch us live, you can actually go to entrepreneurlife.show and you will be able to see us live by just tuning in to watch Facebook Live. And or you can listen on any of your favorite podcast platforms. So that's iHeartRadio, wherever you can find us. So today we're going to have some really great, really great guests on the show. We're waiting to arrive. And um, so I'm, we're looking forward to, we're all looking forward. Hey, hi, Crystal. How are you? Thanks for tuning into the show. We're waiting for our guests to arrive. And um, of course, I'm Rose with McDonald Bookkeeping Services. And um, I provide accounting services. And we try to share a lot of, um, bring a lot of great guests on our show that can give insight to entrepreneurship. Right, Shamara? Yes. <laughs> And again, I'm Tamara Walker with SWA Star Consulting. I provide HR solutions to startups and small businesses. And we're super excited to have our guest today. Um, you know, he had some great insight and entrepreneurship and his journey, so we're super excited to, to get started. So today, our guest should be here momentarily. So we are really looking forward to that. Um, he should be arriving pretty soon. And to everybody to know a little bit about what our show brings to the stage. Why don't you tell them about what we do, Shamara? Yeah, um, so, you know, our show is really about this entrepreneurship, really about the day in the life of an entrepreneur. Um, you know, we, we want to be able to provide some insights um, just about the daily struggles that you might be experiencing, mm -hmm. um, some of the, you know, some of the resources that are out there that can be helpful through that journey. And we just really want to be a help. You know, that's the biggest thing about our show is being that resource, being that educational piece for um, entrepreneurship. And just let you know that you're not alone. Yes. <laughs> you're yes, not alone. Yes. We're all in this journey together. You know, there's struggles, there's cries, there's tears, there's joy, there's happiness. And we just want to be a part of that and helping you through your journey. Yes. And so if, if you have followed us, if many of you have followed us, you will see that we've had some really great guests on the show. And today... We are having Mel Pender. He should be arriving pretty shortly. Um, so we're excited to actually have him arriving on the show. Just if you know a little bit about Mel Pender, um, he is a gold Olympian, gold medalist. Um, he's been in the military. He's had a great journey through his entrepreneurship. So we're really gonna get to talk about that and you know his time and his journey and all of his experiences and he has a, a, an announcement we're looking forward to a great announcement um and it is black history month coming up so that means that obviously this is going to be a great time for him to be on the show from his journey from you know of course um he's older than us not that much older but but um his entrepreneurship and his book and i believe um his wife actually um was a part in writing his book and so that's going to be a great story. Um, so for all of you who are, um, who are, who, who know his background or don't know are from Atlanta. So um, he should be arriving pretty soon um, for the show. And so we've been doing this show for a couple of months and it's been really, really good. It's been taking off really well, hasn't it? Yes, 
so um for all the podcast platforms for those who are listening or who will be tuning in and you'll be um, able to see mel pender um for all the podcast platforms we're on iheart um Let's see, 365 Live. You can find all the podcast stations we are on by just going to entrepreneurlife.show. You will actually be able to see all of the interviews we've had, all the guests that we've had that are on our page. That's entrepreneurlife.show. And then you'll be able to see the live interviews and possibly even if you want to sponsor a show or maybe you have a great guest for our show that you think could share some experience into entrepreneurship. Um, It's a really great um, way for you to get exposure as well, as well as experience and educate. We're always looking for educators. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the the biggest thing about our show is that we want people that have some true insight that can really educate entrepreneurship entrepreneurs out there yes um, so yeah we want you know we want to be on the show to definitely have something to share yeah add value please definitely reach out to us and as you know people in our profession we've gone through the struggle ourselves in starting a business so you know we understand the struggle of starting up and you know wondering if you're doing it right and trying to find the best resources that you can possibly find um, so that you can at least get some better direction. I think mean, we've had um, bankers in, um, someone from Chase Bank. And um, who else have we had on the show? Marketing, um, which is Stan, the marketing guru. And, of course, our background is I'm in the accounting background, and Shamara is in the... You mean Right. <laughs> Um, yeah. Don't forget, we had, you know, uh, Nadia, which was a, a great uh, value add to the show. She talked about, you know, your client avatar, defining who that is, who your audience is. Um, I know, you know, on the last show, we talked a little bit about that as well. And so we're yeah. going to keep diving into that. Um, again, like you said, we're going to have where we, we're we going through our theory. And also when we have guests on the show that can add some more value in regards to all of those things. So, yes, um, yes. you know, looking forward to sharing Yeah. So Mel should be arriving pretty soon. We should see him arriving pretty soon. He should pop into the room. And um, so we're just waiting on that. So for all of you who are listening, you will get to talk to him. And I'm sure Crystal, he will be here soon enough. We will see him pop up in the in the bottom of the show. So of course, if you have any questions for anybody who wants to um, ask any questions, ask us any questions, go ahead and pop in, go to Entrepreneur Life Show dot com to the entrepreneur dot what entrepreneur life dot show and it will take you right into the live facebook feed um so all you have to do is entrepreneur life dot show um go to the top of the page and it will say watch live on facebook and we will be there and you can watch the interviews as well as watch on our youtube page listen to all of the podcasts um, so really easy to get here. Um, all of you on Instagram, um, iHeartRadio, Amazon, um, Alexa. Um, I don't know. We have we have a, a lot of shows going on. A lot, a lot of streaming right now, all at one time. So while we I wait, I apologize for it being so dark. I'm not sure why the lighting is better here. So I might step away and bring a lamp over to help. Okay, okay, lighting. not a problem because we're still waiting for Mel to arrive. <laughs> So just to tell you a little bit about how we got started and on our our show process is, you know, uh, we are both introverts ourselves and to many entrepreneurs um, and in our field, we like to sit behind the desk, behind the counter. And so um, we thought of how can we network, how can we share, how can we become tangible and really help people in business? Um, We did our networking, but sometimes when you network, you try to meet so many people at one time time that you really don't get everything you need to get out of really sharing um, your knowledge or really learning about about them and their business. So I started a podcast and the podcast grew very quickly where I specifically was just educating. Um, I was sharing as many tools as I could and then I thought what if I could bring guests on who could do the same thing? Not selling anything but basically educating and sharing, sharing their knowledge, sharing their experiences, sharing their journeys, sharing their struggles in business, um, challenges they may have had, tips that we can utilize in our everyday business. 
So when I started, it started off so well, but I was only being able to provide accounting tips and resources, and people need more than accounting tips and resources. And so as it grew, I thought, what a great, another great person to add that kind of matches my fit was Shamara on the HR part of it and the human resource part. So of course, then that grew and we thought, well, gosh, you know, we want to bring more to the show than just our accounting and human resource experience. We want to bring people that have all fields that can actually help other uh, business owners, right? Right, right. Yeah, no, it's been really great. I mean, we've had quite a few guests, you know, we're hoping that we can get that to come back again. So I know from the last time they have, they have a lot more insight. Um, our yeah. show was limited during that time. Now that we yeah. have the ability to take longer and take a um, longer in terms of interviewing people, we're hoping that we bring some of those people back and we extend the show a little bit more and share some more insight. So it's been really great. Yes. Thank you for everything. <laughs> yes. And so, and what's happened is, aside from it, us, us being able to educate and bring exposure to our guests, but we really like to bring tangible guests on that can really help you and so that you're not alone in whatever that journey is, whatever your age is or whatever business you are in. It's all relative. It's something that we can all use, you know, um, especially when it comes to mentorship or like when you said we had Nadi on the show, which just was really great. She gave a lot of, a lot of insight, which I love. Right. Right. Yeah, I can't wait for him to be on the show. I'm excited yeah. to have him on the show and get, him, yes. get he, some insight about his journey. And we Hopefully do. We are working on some really, I can't really say who our other guests are, but we're working for some <laughs> other great guests for March, you know, and we really become a little bit picky, I guess you'd say, on the guests we have on the show because we really want it to be tangible and, you know, a guest that can really be. And um, I guess intuitive and educational and experienced and have a background and just a really great story. We had Papa John Aviance, um, which was mm -hmm. um, two weeks ago, which was, oh, that's, I, as a matter of fact, I have your shirt here, Shamara, like, and the book. I love my shirt, I can't wait. Yes, I have it here. As a matter of fact, I have it right. Go get out of the show. I want my So for all of you alive, we had Papa John Aviance on the show. And here is his book. Whoops, if you can see that. So, Balancing the Scales. He was a really, really, really great guest. And so, which we plan to have him back when he, I believe when he comes out with the show, correct? He's going he's gonna to allow us to interview him again. Yes. And so, we want to, of course, bring him on. And here we go. Electric. Yes. <laughs> so electric. I love it. Really great, great interview. Um, he has a, a wonderful story that we can all take something from. If you're not familiar, go to our page, entrepreneurlife.show, and you will be able to see that interview. Um, and as a matter of fact, we had... Um, uh, Dr. Miami, which was, that was a fun yeah. interview, very fun interview with Dr. Miami. If you go to our page, our page, entrepreneurlife.show, you will see that interview did you, as did well. Did you see the Dominique with him? Did yes. <laughs> so we are really excited that Dominique has really um, kind of helped us and teamed up with us in a sense and really bringing us great guests. And um, now we've teamed up with another publicist, which now is how we have um, Mel Pender. Um, and so she's brought us a few upcoming guests as well, So, um, which is really good to connect because then um, we can market them as well as get their story out there. So I'm hoping he gets here pretty shortly. He should be here shortly because I know people are looking forward to that and they're probably, and I can actually see my live feed here on, um, actually on my Apple, so there seems to be some people waiting in the room for him so we can't see you but we hear you out there on podcast <laughs> land and um yeah so um so while we're waiting for mel as we know it's black history month is coming up and um he will be sharing some information with us for black history month um and of course he has his um his book out which is, I, I want, you know, he should probably introduce this, but his biography, Expressions of Hope, 
Um, so, and if you can see in the background, he is a gold medalist and Olympian. And this book, Expression to Hope, is his biography. Oh, I see him. And he has arrived. Yay. So, we are about to get him on screen. Woo! Party time. Party. Okay. Okay. So, for everybody who's been waiting, the man is here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we have a problem trying to get All right. Mr. Mel Pender. Woo! Okay. Well, he disappeared for a minute. He's got to come back. We're so close. So close. Let's see where he went. Okay. So, that was, that was a teaser, people. For people who are watching, that was just a teaser. Okay? But he's, he's coming back. That was a teaser. Um, so this is him, of course, in the background, and sorry you're all patiently waiting. If you saw us, I'm amazing. You know, if you can't see me, but I'm pretty amazing. Shamar, we're pretty amazing, right? So if you were on the live, you'd be able to see how awesome we are. You know, I did my hair. Shamar did her hair. I love my curls today. I'm a curly Q today. That looks great. So for all of you who are missing the live, you could be seeing us amazing, beautiful women here on the show right. so, yeah but he should be right back on shortly he must have probably just lost reception um so hold tight right. we're gonna get mr mel pender on the show um and i will actually maybe i'll let you introduce mel is that okay with you you can introduce Mel. you can introduce Murray, yeah definitely because i have lots of questions i do have lots of questions <laughs> um because you know i'm always interested in people's stories that were before our time when they really went through the struggle because we say we go through right. the struggle but it ain't nothing like they go through the struggle you know what i mean right. we're not the first black business out there um and I, I can just imagine the time of being um the first black business owner or one of the very first in just the struggles that you have to go through just on that alone and and, and the and the right. time that the time and period it was you know what i'm saying yeah, I mean, that, that's why I'm so excited to have him on the show because, you know, it's, it's history and I'm a real big kid. Yes, yes, yes. You know, where he came from and kind of being having to readjust to, like, the new yes. time and how business is nowadays and yes. what his story is behind that, that I'm so excited to hear all about it. I, yeah, it's, it's definitely different, <laughs> different times. I sure. mean, you know, the just the, at that time in the profession of just being accepted to be in business as a black business owner i mean we already have our struggles today and just our own personal journey but nothing like before because now we have someone people to learn from who already battled you know walking the streets you know and and you know petitioning and fighting for us you know minorities especially black and black women and of I course know. I'm yes like, yeah, black own businesses you know yeah yeah saying that we are black women owning a bit of you know black owned business is yeah exciting <laughs> and it is important that, that we support one another as difficult as it can be it is very important mm -hmm. and learning from our elders and those before us um it's extremely important that we learn that so right. hopefully he will be back shortly um he must have got lost a little bit of reception so um but aside from that, for everyone else, a little bit more about um, some of the upcoming guests that we have coming on. So we do have a nutritionist coming on, and um, which mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, so actually I, I, I read up on her a bit. Um, oh, you know what? Oh, there he is. Okay, people, no, I think where he's really back this time. He's really, really back this time. Okay, let's throw him in the, get him in the show. And now let's see where we go. Okay. There he is. All right. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. We've been having a hard time getting you. These phones. Take young people work on these. Yeah, work with these phones and technology. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you again. So I'm going to introduce you to the show so that everybody gets to know who you are. So Mel Pender, he is an athlete, um, a former Olympus goldist medalist in the four. 4x100 men relay in the 1986 Summer Olympics. Yeah. He was a member of the Philadelphia Pioneer Track Club and is now an entrepreneur, an author, author. Um, who, is, who wants to share his journey and his work in really just shifting from 
being an athlete to now an entrepreneur and also an author. So we're super excited to have him on the show today. We're excited to have you on the show today. So please awesome. tell us a little bit more about yourself oh. and your journey, and we're excited to get started. Author sounds so important. Author. I mean, it just I know. <laughs> it sounds so fancy. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, uh, we've been having a, having a tough time getting you guys, but uh, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, I have to really uh, thank Alina Richardson for, for her effort uh, to help me with, with, with my book and with promoting my book and also getting me on these beautiful shows like this. I, uh, my wife and I, you know, we uh, uh, worked on this book for like five years, and as one day she said, you know, it's time to write your book. And because so many people were saying, Mel, you need to write a book. You've done so much in your life, and you need to tell that story, which probably would help a whole lot of people, a whole lot of kids and, and, and older people. And um, I've gone through a lot of um, um, things in my life that, uh, you know, it, I, it probably took me a year to, to tell you about some of the things um, that I went through, uh, discrimination yeah. and, and racism and so on and so forth. But, you know, as a kid growing up in the South, I see things, I would see things in my neighborhood. I see things that was happening uh, back in the day, but you too young to remember that, both of you probably. <laughs> back, back, back of the bus and right on the back of the bus and, and uh, black and white water fountains and, and calling and people calling your names because of the color of your skin. Well, you know, my thing was hope, hoping one day that I could, I, could pers- I could be better than that and I had to persevere, you know, and say, okay, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be somebody. In fact, when I was younger, uh, when I was like uh, 13, 14 years old, I, I told my mother. I said, uh, in fact, what happened was I was standing on the corner with my buddies. Mm-hmm. And uh, back in the day, the police would come to our black neighborhood and turn their lights out at night. We had just a little raggedy cafe. We call it stand. In that stand, we got a little pot belly stove that keep us warm in the winter, and a pool table, and we got hamburgers and hot dogs with the cat stove. And, on, and we have dance contests. Everybody wanted to dance back then. Yeah. Everybody wanted to dance. And, and so, of course, I was one of the best dancers. But, um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wanted to show their stuff, right? But the cops would come up there and turn his lights out and jump out of the car and start beating up the biggest guy uh, on the corner there, you know. And, and I, I went home so fast one night and I told my mother, I said, look, one day I'm going to make you proud of me. I said, I'm not going to be on that corner after 9 o'clock at night. And the only thing we had, that's the only thing we had to do, that's all we had, was go on the corner if I, if on Friday nights and with all our friends and dance and, and just, you know, have a good time when we were playing football. But, you know, those things, you know, like seeing those kind of things made me want to want, make me want to do something with my life. And, I, you know, I got married quite young, too. I mean, you won't believe how young I got married. I got married at 16. Yes, 16. But you started your entrepreneurship extremely young, like in your youth, right? Oh yeah, well, you know, I, I had a baby coming, so I had to do something. And, and the thing about it is, you know, I didn't I didn't have a father, you know, that to teach me any difference uh, uh, about certain things. And and so my father and mother divorced when I was um, when I was like four, ten years old. And uh, and so he moved to from a little town called Dolphin, Georgia, to Atlanta, and lived live with my grandmother. But you know, look, girls are getting pregnant, and guys would say, let the welfare take care of them. And guys don't take care of their children. I said, no, that's not I'm a man. I want to take care of my child. And I was captain of the football team. I was a good student. My girlfriend was queen of the school. And I was um, a good student. And I just said, I'm going to do something with my life. And I'm not going to be one of those guys that's going to not take care of my child, my baby, and my wife. So I joined the Army. And the Army saved my life. It wasn't for the military. I don't know why I would be there, honestly. Uh, I, I used the system. I didn't fight the system. And, you know, as you can see now, I retired as a captain in the United States Army after 21 years. Um, you know, and I made two Olympic teams and and been one of the fastest guys in the world and went track until I was 25 years old. And in Okinawa, I was stationed with the 82nd Airborne Devon Airplane uh, 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 in Okinawa. And one day the coach said, I went to one of the Japanese training for the 1964 games in Tokyo. And I said, Coach, I don't think about track. Well, look, you're the fastest guy on the football team. Go to the supply, we'll pick up your supplies, some shoes, and I'll pick you up and take you down to Nargo, Northern end of the hour. And just watch the Japanese. Just watch the Japanese. I said, okay. He said, everything you do, you do. Okay, I said, okay. So I watched the Japanese. The gun went off. I said, oh, well, I think I better go now. 
<laughs> do you do you think I was pretty well down in track? I caught some Japanese and I won my first track. And that's how I got into track. You know, so I can say, you know, living in the South, you're made to feel inferior. I'm telling you, you know, jobs you had, you know, like I said, people calling your names and segregated schools and and you know, I can go on and go on and go on, but you have to read the book, get the rest of the story, okay? But but so I'm, what kept you, like, what kept you motivated, you know, during that time, of, I, like, I'm just trying to think about how I would have survived in that situation, you know, so what kept you going to keep driving forward and, you know, just being here today? <laughs> well, you know, it's my, my grandfather, you know, I didn't have, my father and mother divorced, now my grandfather, my grandfather only had, like, third grade education, but the guy, you know, he learned how to read, I read his Bible, and Sometimes my buddy would come down, my buddies would come down, we'd sit on the, on the front, on, the, on the, my house, on the front porch, he'd be in his rocking chair. And, you know, I, if you're young, about, you know, 10, 11 years old, you, you're not paying attention to your grandfather. Mm. And one day he said, listen! My buddy said, how was your grandfather, man? Is he crazy? I said, I said, no, man, my grandfather's very wise. And my grandfather said, always listen. He said, if you listen, you can learn a lot. He said, he said, listen to older people older than you are. He said, when you're in school, be the best that you can be. He said, because not, nobody gives you nothing in life, son. He said, you have to be the best. And, and he would make a little thing like this. I'll never forget this. He said, if you sit on the floor on one side of the room, and you got another person sitting the floor on this side of the room, he said, make sure your, floor, your side of your floor turns and look sooner than the guy on the other side of the room. He said, you got to be better. And, and he would say, we, he would say, we, he would say. And my buddy would say, man, what's wrong with your grandfather? I said, no, man. I said, man, it's very wise. Hey, you need to listen to him. So, but I listened to my grandfather, and I said, I'm going to do something with my life. And I told my mother and my grandmother one night, after I went home, right that, that night the cops came on the corner and saw beating mm. with my buddy. I said, one day I'm going to make a problem. And that, that, that made me do the things that, I, you know, that I, I've done in my life. It, it, I listen to my grandfather say those words to me. And when I go talk to young kids, I say the same thing to them. I tell them about my grandfather, about listening, and about living in the greatest country in the world. We live in the greatest country in the world. Even though we have our problems, we got mm -hmm. problems now. You know, but you have to be able to overcome those problems. You have to be able to persevere. You got to be able to say, I'm going to be better than the person next to me. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, be better. I'm going to be the best that I can be. And I showed my grandmother and grandfather and my mom and my dad, what, what, you know, that I could be better. So I joined the army, and, and uh, I went to, uh, went to Vietnam um, the first time, and they pulled me out of Vietnam, and that's when I made my first Olympic team. And you see a picture on the screen there. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that says, be hope. Well, I got hurt. I pulled a muscle in my steady final race, in my rib case. And the doctor said, you can't run. He said, no, you can't. Uh, you can't run. You got torn up from the rib cage, and then said the party caught him, and you know, internal bleeding. If you, you know, if you strain it, I said, no, doc. I'm twenty. I'm twenty-seven years old. One of the oldest sprinters in the history of track and field was making an Olympic team in a hundred meters back. So I said, I may not be able to come back. I said, do what you got to do. So he started giving me injections. So I ended up playing uh, placing six in a hundred meters, uh, and I wasn't able, wasn't able to win a gold medal, and when, and also wasn't able to win a relay team. So after, after the Olympic Games in 1964 in Tokyo, I went back, 82nd Airborne Division, and I said, well, it's time for me to start working uh, on my future. What am I going to do once I graduate? I didn't have any college. So I said, I'm going to stay, I'm going off the Kennedy School. I'm going to be an off the United States Army. Mm -hmm. And at the time, during the Vietnam War, if you were thrown enough to pass the test and get, uh, do, uh, pass the test at 116 on the, on the test, IQ 116, you can go to OCS. And I didn't know I was smart enough to be on 116. I took the test, I studied, and I took the test, and I passed. Okay? And I went to OCS. And right after OCS, over out of Kansas, I was sent to, I was sent to Vietnam. I mean, right out, right out of OCS, six months, I was in Vietnam as a second lieutenant in the sun company. And fighting and sent a lot of stuff. I, I was talking about Vietnam. So, how, how did pulled, you. They pulled me out of Vietnam. They took me out of Vietnam for the 1968 Games. And that's when I made the 1968 Games a gold medal in the 4 by 100 meter relay. At age 30, yeah, the oldest player in history track and field to do that at that time 
to win a gold medal, set a world record in the league at age 32. And also, I set a world record in the 50, 60, and 70 yard dash. Mm -hmm. I mean, the 60 yard dash I set when I was 34 years old. No one's ever done that. And uh, so, I, I, you know, then I got my second tour after my tour. I was stationed at West Point Military mm -hmm. Now, you don't get to West Point unless you're in the top 10 cities in Tipperary. So, when I to West Point, I was first coach, back coach, and teacher that of the school. And, uh, which was, I tell you, was a great, um, I, I met some of the most intelligent young men on this earth. And they just like, they were just like my son. And I, in fact, I just had a birthday party. I invited as many as I could find. About 25 of them came to Atlanta, all over the, all over the country, California, New York, everywhere, since my 82nd birthday party. And that was one of the Wow, congratulations. <laughs> so, so how did you jump from, though, your, from, I mean, you went from, military you know to being in the olympics uh, olympic runner i mean that's that's a lot of stuff going on to transition you know well, just yes it was i mean <laughs> yeah if you read the book you see some of my teammates talk about how amazing it was for me to come out of the jungle to fight in vietnam mm -hmm. being shy at and, and and come back and with eight nine months to make the olympic team and win a gold medal and then set world records. He said, nobody, no, nobody does that. He said, well, how did you do that? I said, that was, I think that was God. You know, God had, had a mission for me and I, he still has a mission for me. Hey, I'm, 80, I'm 86 now, I still look good, don't I? Mm -hmm. I'm 80. Yes, you look amazing. I said so, 82, oh my gosh. So, I just want to I mean, you at 82. <laughs> so I know many of us <laughs> like my, like my <laughs> age, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm 82, not 86. My wife is so, on the show. You're not 80, you're not 86. So many of us like my age and her age, because times are obviously different, and we think that we struggle with equality and racism, whether it's racism, equality, or gender equality, it, it had to have been such so much more of a struggle or so much more obvious and apparent at your time. I mean, I'm sure it was in the military. I'm sure it was in athletics. I'm sure it was starting your own business. I mean, how do you ma how do you not have you know? I guess some people say you have hatred or disappointment. You know that it 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 um it, it doesn't allow them to in, to proceed and endeavor and get to where you've gotten. You get what I'm saying? They just give up. Right, right. Even in the military, you mentioned the military. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when I retired from the military after my uh, last six years uh, uh, before my retirement, I applied for the head coach job because the head coach passed away. And one of the things that always haunt me probably for the rest of my life is the next day they got ready for a head black coach at West Point. Now here I am, bronze medal winner in Vietnam, gold medalist, Hall of Famer, world record holder. I mean, what else can a man do? I mean, I. I I had all this accolade. I mean, how could you not give me this? Well, we're not ready for. I don't think alumni is ready for pick like right. coaches more. And after and, and actually, the year that I was the interim coach after he died, I had the best season in the history of that school. Then that coach was there for twenty five years, and and that was one of the things that said haunts me today. I, I, we live in the greatest country in the world, and you know, and it bothers me that we still have problems right now with that government and. Things that I'm seeing now in our government, I never dreamed that I would see or hear uh, from from a leader. You know, I, I just don't, I can't comprehend that. I just, you know, I'm seeing men, young men die at very early age and, and defending this country and when I was in Vietnam. And then I come here and I see things uh, today that really disturbing for me because the color of my skin and the color of, of, of people, mm -hmm. of, of, and we as we as black people, we need we need to come together, and we need to start working on each other. Yeah. We need to help each other. We yeah. need to help our young people. We need to get at these schools and 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 and, and let these kids know there's other things out there besides selling drugs. You know, there's other things out there. You can go to trade school. You go in the military. Look at me. I went when I was 17. I retired at 38. I have oh, a great pension. My. I have, <laughs> I have a super pension. You know. And, uh, and, you know, and, 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 and another thing, like me, I get out of the military, I retire from the military, and I go directly into the business. You know, I had an athletic attitude store, 
which was a franchise for like four years, and I sold it. And I worked for the National Football League. I designed a track shoe for, for Mitre Sport. Uh, it was a soccer ball soccer shoe coming out of England. I designed a first track shoe. And, and, and one called the Mexico with the world record, was set a world record by Houston next year. I worked for, and then I worked for the Homeless Association, Job Corps. I always worked with kids. I love working with kids. And my last job uh, was, uh, I was a consultant to a company in, in DeKalb County, in Decatur, Georgia, uh, bringing in uh, sports to the county. I put on the biggest track meet in the history of Atlanta besides the Olympic Games. And people kicked them all over, Jamaica, Rhode Island, uh, Bahamas. New York, the king. Yeah. I'm, I'm from the island, so anytime you say anything, <laughs> I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and, and the only thing, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, and, and and then, you know, after my last job was Atlanta Hawks. I was first Atlanta Hawks uh, Foundation Director mm-hmm. of Community Affairs. And that was a great job. I really enjoyed that. I left there because I, the injuries I, I received in the military. It caused me to uh, go out on disability. You know, I, you know, I have, I have leukemia. I have cancer. I have cancer, and in fact, I just had uh, chemo uh, about two months ago, and had several operations my neck, my back. I mean, I've, I've gone through it, but I look, even though I'm going through all these different problems and health and stuff, I got a good woman. <laughs> Yes, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to bring her on. So, so do you think that it, the military it, it's what helped shape you, or you know the, the military that that helped you in your your success or your journey? Yeah, military helped shape me. It helped me on my journey. Like I said, I had to persevere. I had to go through a lot. I had to take a lot. I had to do a lot. And and, and but I had a goal. I had a promise I made to my parents. And my grandparents, I said, one day I'm going to make you proud of me. And living in the greatest country in the world, uh, in, in America, there's nothing you can't accomplish here. You put your, but my grandfather said, be the best that you can be. My grandfather said, listen. I never forget. He said, you sleep in the floor? Remember I said about sleeping the floor? Just little simple things right. like, you know, I go back and I think about those things. You know, like I said, talking to young people. But, you know, it's amazing. I, when my wife said, write this book, she said, it's amazing all the things you have done, all of your accomplishments, you know, working for the FBI, DEA, you know, helping going to different org- small towns in, in the state of Georgia, talking to kids about getting off of drugs. You know, um, I mean, just just little things. I mean, I can go on and go on and go on and tell you, but all these little things that, 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 that I've done, uh, not bragging, not, you know, I'm not saying I, 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 but... I got a good feeling from that. I feel good about the things that I've done, mm-hmm. of helping people. I love helping people. And that's what we all need to do. We need to help one another. God put us on this earth, you know, as, as, as one people. We, we all believe one color, that's red. That God did that. And God said, you know, you're supposed to help the poor. And you're supposed to do that. But we got problems. And we don't come ourselves as one people, as, as, as a nationality, as one people, and, and get ourselves together. We still gonna have problems for the rest of our lives. Now, I did see that you had um, you had actually organized a Muhammad Ali track club, and that for females, that is for women. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, when I had my store, my athletic addict shoe store, I said I'm gonna organize a track team in Atlanta, and I want nothing but girls on it. So what I did was I went to the track coaches uh, this before school hour, and I I, I got. I gathered all the top girls in a certain, in almost every event. Uh-huh. And many, 15, I had 15 girls on my team. And and uh, they had all the equipment, because I had a store, and the shoes I had, they had, you know, had the equipment, uh, they had, my, had Muhammad Ali's name on it, and mm-hmm. Muhammad Ali was, and you know, Muhammad Ali's last fight was in Atlanta. I don't know, I don't know you know that. There's a documentary out on that. I used to see it. And by having his name, and those kids being involved with the name Muhammad Ali, right? They, they were so, I mean, they were wonderful. They ran their hearts out. They trained. I took those kids on their first airplane ride. We went everywhere. We went to California. We went, we went to uh, Kentucky, to New York. These kids had never been on an airplane before. And, and for them to do that and be involved with uh, the name, and Muhammad Ali was there, you know, congratulating them, you know, before they went on the track. Uh, but a lot of these girls now, they are, have master's degrees, PhDs. Uh, it's unbelievable. These young girls have done well. I think it, it, it's amazing. I, you know, in fact, we got one. She calls me daddy. She says, 
through my father, and she calls my wife mama. So I'm still in touch with them. You know, I, I'm still in touch, like just like my track guys. You know, they come when they came to my birthday party. They would say things to me like, you know, you really changed my life. You really helped me to be a man. But not only coaching me, but your advice. And to hear them say that to me, it is more in my heart. So tell us about having the actual one, the first black businesses in Atlanta. How did that come about? What what brought that to fruition? Uh, the Black Attic? The Sporting Goods Store, right? Yes. Okay, it was a franchise from one of my teammates. Uh, he was a distant runner that went to the University of Florida. He started he started a franchise uh, as an athletic shoe store. And I had an opportunity to be a Cadillac dealership because they were looking for minorities to be dealers of Cadillac dealerships. Mm -hmm. And I either come home um, and open an athletic shoe store. And so I chose the store. You know, I, I chose the athletic shoe store and which paid out very well because yeah. I got to do, I got to travel, I had to store. I, I even put on a camp too for the National Football Players mm -hmm. Association mm -hmm. when I had that store. And that store did a lot for me because I had opportunity to, to supply equipment to kids in little league, little league uh, teams. Uh, I had an opportunity to work for the National Football Players Association to put a camp together called a Vocation Exploration Program. We took the kids out of the, uh, in, uh, the this, uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, low-income in housing. Mm -hmm. We took college setting, and we taught them about life. And you know, we ran the camp. I have to say this: we ran this camp like a city. They had to vote for mayor, vice mayor, police chief, fire chief. We had a bank. Uh, we even had an uh, a actor, uh, which is he passed away. Because we used the facilities at the college we had, it's mm -hmm. called West Georgia College. They had a TV station, a radio station. So we taught kids how to how to operate uh, TV equipment. Uh, uh, we we also had a radio that was pumped into the to the buildings. And every morning, the kid would get up and talk on the radio and, and play music for the kids that they like to hear. Uh, we had a news guy that would, would give you the news, go to the newspapers, and say, "Okay, this is what happened today in Atlanta. It's happening around the world." I mean, it was unbelievable, one of the greatest camps. I, I, I tell you, beat me camps like that in every city. President Carter uh, had, um, it, was, it was a CEDA program, something President Carter started. And some of those kids now have master degrees, PhDs, own their own businesses. And some of these kids didn't, you know, I'm telling you, some of the environment these kids lived in, in the city, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, we even had hairdressers come up and fix the girl's hair, we had haircuts. Mm -hmm. Had to buy shoes for some of the kids. I even had to buy underwear. But some of the kids <laughs> didn't have to change their underwear. I mean, it was like they were in another world. And we had we had professional athletes there that was counselors. We had college kids that we took news from the college there as counselors, and they turned out to be the one of one of the best uh, uh, camps I think in this country. And it's too bad that we don't have those camps now because we get a lot of kids off the street. You'd be surprised how that saved a lot of kids' lives. Um, then I, I had a bottled water company also. He said, I'm the new one. Let me tell you about the bottled water <laughs> company, okay? It was called Great American Water. Uh, I had a contract. Uh, Albany State got flooded during a hurricane, and that was my first contract with FEMA. That was the same time I was working for the Atlanta Hawks. And uh, I contacted FEMA because Puerto Rico had a huge hurricane about 20 years ago, and I got a contract with FEMA to supply water uh, to, to, uh, to Puerto Rico. I mean, probably $2.5 million worth of water. A lot of water we sold. And also during the Olympics, we had I Great American Water. Uh, we sold it uh, uh, to uh, people that uh, came to the Olympic Games. And But there was a problem there also, okay, because I heard a lot of people that put a lot of money into, uh, into, into the uh, uh, products they were selling. They was tearing people's uh, uh, sites down, taking their equipment. Uh, I mean, I, I felt sorry for a lot of people. I mean, it, it was just bad. They would block streets out where people couldn't come down the streets to buy the, the merchandise. You know, to, I'm going to say this. Olymp Atlanta was the worst Olympics I ever ever, been, ever seen in my entire life. Uh -huh. Olympics was terrible. Let me tell you, it was awful. Uh, but and but we uh, we uh, we persevered and we did well. You know, I sold the company and and after I sold the company, I, I kind of retired and and um, start doing just acts of motivation speaking around the country. 
was it hard to, um, you know, because of a time of, you know, it's um, uh, it's still some racism to, um, for for even I, I would think that African Americans starting a, a business, um, I mean just, I mean it would be, it would be difficult that you would you know that your own would buy from you or just the struggles you have from your counterparts of other races, you know, um, not supporting you. I mean, you have to have a really strong supporting party. Yes. Um, there was, there's, you know, discrimination is always there. I, I'm going to tell you, I, mean, I don't care what you do in America. If you're black and, and, and you, um, you have a business or you're trying to, to, uh, to get ahead in this country, you really have to persevere. You really have to really work hard and you have to ignore a lot of stuff. You've got to just look right. over a lot of stuff. I'm telling you that right, right now. Even today, it's, it's tough. You know, um, for instance, I'm, I was going to say this. My wife and I went to a church last night, and it was a church where this uh, mafia guy gave his, gave his life to God. And we were the only two people at our table. There's 500, over 500 people there, and our table, we had table number one right up front. And we were the only two people sitting there, and these other people came. I'm not going to take it. Well, they came and sat at our table, and you can tell it's pretty well, right? Right. And you can tell they felt uneasy sitting there with my wife. Uh, and, and because I'm black and my wife is white. Okay? Right. No. And, <laughs> and uh, so, I, you know, I was sitting there, and we were sitting there, and they lady kind of, kind of turned her back to the side, and, and I kind of tried to get in. I, you know me, I'm the type of person that I love people. I was trying to get in a conversation with the guy. He was a right. big real estate guy. And you can tell me they didn't want to talk to me. And I, and I was telling my wife, I said, did you feel that, you know, my wife probably don't feel things like I do because right. I'm black, right. you know, uh, my wife's a minister, but we never had any problems really discrimination because of our race. We, people, even you have people of different colors, are we talking about how great we look together and our, you know, our, you know, they, in fact, we go to an all black church and my wife is, is part of the church there, mm -hmm. but it, it's just the things where you still see people who have crooked minds. You know what I mean? Yeah. They still, they still think, you know, people are different because of the color of their skins or when they see mixed marriages and when they see stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We all, we all people, you know, I don't, you know, I don't look at my wife being, being white. I, you know, you'd be surprised that all the people that love this lady, she is one of the most wonderful women, women on this earth. She, everybody loves her. Everybody loves her. That she is right there. Uh, she uh, she's involved in the community. Uh, she she counsels people uh, when they have, when they have problems, marriage, marriages and, and relationships. She she's always giving. Uh, she took care of my mother to the day she passed away. She took care of my mother back and forth from Atlanta to, to um, uh, so what 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 started the book. Your autobiography, well, Expressions of Hope. Where, where did that come about? Well, it, okay, that that books. Uh, we always, my wife and I, always had, uh, you know, we always had in our heart that we wanted to write this book. My wife is a great writer, but she, one day she woke up and said, "It's time to write this book." And at the time, you'd be surprised. It was so hard writing this book because at the time, my mother was in at, was was uh, late eighties, and she was going through dementia, and her mother was sick, and and. Um, Minnesota. I moved my father here. I moved my father here from Chicago, which I hadn't seen in quite some time. And I was going through several operations at the mm -hmm. same time. Uh, we were writing this book, and that's why it took us so long. She was traveling back and forth to, to Minnesota. But so we we would stay up late at night and 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 just talk. You know, I would just talk to her uh, and write things down. And and and, and she would say, okay. Uh, we're gonna, we, we're gonna we're gonna write a great book, and we did write a great book. It's amazing how she put this book together, just by me talking to her and and giving her information about my life, uh, you know. And we said one day she said we're gonna call this book the Expression of Hope. And I said that is a great that is a great title, and because it was all about hope for me, you know, hope one day that I could be the person I am today, hope that I could give my mother, I, I can live up to the, the dreams that I, I I promised my mom. Hope that I could get an education, you know. Hope that I could have a beautiful home one day and beautiful children, and 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 hope that one day that 
we all, all people in America, after being in Vietnam, that we could come together as one people and, and not discriminate uh, against one another and just be one, 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 one person, one people in general, just one people, Americans. And that was all, that was all about hope. This is what the book is all about. It's about hope, living, living my dream, uh, dreaming of, of everybody loving one another. And if you see in that book, you can see some things that I talk about, um, about hope and, and the things that I've gone through and, 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 and the, first, the times that I had to persevere and, and, and all the things that, uh, that I know God, that I know that God had a mission, had me on a mission. And he still has me on point. Now, you co-authored the book together, correct? And I'm assuming that you have a lot of things. I mean, you don't want to give us a hint about some of the stuff you have in there. Give us just a little bit, well, you, you know. know. I'm going to let my lovely wife know. <laughs> She's sitting right next to me. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Dander. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Let's see if we can get us together. Yes, we yeah. can see you there just fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was an uh, amazing journey. I... It was so enjoyed putting his book together because I learned so much about my husband. And uh, there is so much uh, in there that you can draw from with all the things that he had to overcome. And I think that anybody that reads it will find something of themselves in this book. So that's, you know, really the, the whole concept of expression of hope. We didn't realize the journey that we were on when we started it. But now it's really coming with Arlena Richardson's help. She has really drawn out the whole expression of hope and the whole concept of hope. And uh, it has become our mission to spread hope wherever we go. So I just wanted to interject and tell you that we're very excited about where it's going to go. So what, what, so you're still not going to give us a little bit of, um, like something in there, like maybe how you, is it like how you met the journey from being in the military to maybe some struggles, some personal things that were happening in, you know, your entrepreneurship to being one of the very first black owned business. I mean, you know, I'm trying to get some, I'm trying to give you gives a little bit of something in there. I mean, is your story in there, your personal story of meeting and struggles that you've had with, you know, your we black... Do. We did put that in there. Um, <laughs> actually, I, I, the way we met was in a church parking lot. And it was, you know, you know when your moment in time is? And that was our moment in time. And I think that we haven't had any major struggles because we fit together so well. It was, we, in fact, our first date, or we was really our second date, we went out to, um, uh, Melvin said, oh, I want to buy you something. So he took me to this uh, clothing store called Macy's. Macy's? They had Macy's Ma then? I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we went to Macy's. And we were walking in, and there was this black woman sitting out there on some kind of a ledge. And she looked at us, and she said, man, you two look good together. <laughs> and we, we looked at each other like, okay. And then everywhere we went, we had people commenting on how well we looked together. And so it was like, when I was thinking something, he was saying it. Or when I was saying something, he was thinking it. We fit together so well. And it has never stopped. So, uh, you know, there wasn't much that we had to do to overcome anything in a relationship because both of us were seasoned veterans of relationships and mm -hmm. uh, we we knew what we were looking for and we found it in each other so that part was not a struggle well you know it's, it's amazing um when she said we met in the church parking lot you know i i had moved my mom in with me because we had sold our home and she, she couldn't stay by herself anymore and i was got i was take i was start taking taking my mom to church with me because she couldn't, like I said, she couldn't live by herself anymore. And one Sunday, I was I spoke to the youth service that morning, and, and that's when Debbie was at the church. And when I walked out walked out of the church, there was Debbie, and I didn't see her. The minister was greeting everybody after we left, and the man of Jackson's son, who was a good friend of, of, of ours, uh, he uh, played the drums in, in church, and he calls Debbie mom. He said, and the minister stopped me and said, I want you to meet somebody. So he came over to my car as I was leaving 
and and, and Reverend Durley is a, met, a minister of that church, pastor of that church. Mm -hmm. He said, "I want you to meet somebody." So I, I and then uh, uh, Debbie was introduced to me by by his name is Buffy. We call him Buffy. Buzzy. I'm sorry, we call him Buzzy. But I said, "I want you to meet my mom." So she came up to the car, and I shook her hand, and I reached out and I shook her hand, and we couldn't turn each other's hands loose. I, I don't know what it was because I, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wasn't gonna get married again. I'd been married once. I said, "No, I'm not married. I'm not married. Uh -uh, not me. Uh -uh, I had it." But I don't know what happened. I think it was it was a gift from God, you know, that He sent her to me because all the things that's happened in my life, but made me and her and and, and, and marrying her and mm -hmm. how she took care of my mom and helped me with my dad and how she took took care of me when I was sick, going through my surgeries, and her mother. I mean, it, it's amazing how we just just. Just, just came together as one, uh, as two people. I mean, it is, you know, everybody loves this lady. I, you know, it's amazing. Everybody loves her. Yeah. So, do you find? I hear that when people write a book, sometimes, and it's their autobiography, it's like reliving your your life all over again. Would you yes. say that's the case? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, you know, it's a lot in the book that I know you want to hear some. Uh, I can go on and go on and tell you about some of my horses. Uh, <laughs> and and, and uh, I, I can tell you uh, uh, about coming back from Vietnam and taking my wife to the doctor and, and sitting in this little room in back with two chairs and a little table and yeah. and, my, and walking up to the front desk and, and, they, and I was told, you, you people sit in the back, just out of the jungles of Vietnam. I mean, then Olympic Games and someone say that to me and, and seeing people die, young men die in my arms and, and someone say, well, you people have to sit back there. You people don't belong up here. And I can, I can go on and go on and tell you about stuff. You, 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 won't, you won't imagine. Some of us in the book. I mean, that's why you need to read the book. And all the things that I've gone through and the things that I had to do to, to be the person I am today, you know, if, and I just want to help young people to, to, to understand that you're going to have challenges in your life nobody gives you anything in life mm -hmm. you have to go out there and you have to fight for, for everything that you get and 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 I had to you know I, I didn't have my mentor was my grandfather and, and, and my coach that I had when I first started running track Colonel Colonel Lipscomb mm -hmm. and, and 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 the words that uh, again my grandfather said uh, about listening and 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 you look at me now, and I go back, and I'm 82. I can't believe I'm 82. She wish. Well, you know, we have a freaking out. Today. today is February 1st. It's the start of Black History Month. Yeah. And I want Melvin to tell what the big announcement is. Yes. Well, what is the announcement? We're super yes. excited to hear. <laughs> okay. I, you know, um, we are launching um, our website. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you going to sell your book on your website? It's at fairpender.com. Uh, Alina Richardson and my wife, uh, uh, they have done a wonderful job. Alina, I'm telling this lady, is, is one of the best. I mean, if you see this website, you're going to see what I'm talking about. She has been so grateful and, and so nice and, 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 and helped us so much to put this together. And I, I just, I, I'm just, you know, I, everybody, if everybody needs somebody to promote them, they need to call Miss Richardson. She's wonderful. You. Yes. She's wonderful. So the website, Melvin is um, excited and I'm excited because it's bringing us into a new decade and it's working with the fact that we are promoting the book even at a, a, a bigger level. We've got a program called the Relay Team. What is it called? It's the Relay Team. Relay Team? Yes, and people can connect with the relay team and get involved. We have, uh, we want to get a book into all the hands of the youth that we can. So, people that would like to get involved will buy books. We'll be donating them to uh, organizations for youth, and then we have a military initiative, and we're going to be putting together a package for our troops that are, are coming back and forth. And uh, it'll be a part. Uh, a book will be in one of the in the package, and so we're very excited. Melvin does promotional or public speaking, and um, anybody that wants to book him for a speaker can click on that website. Also, we've got our Facebook fan page, and 
Um, you know, that, those are things that Arlena has helped us to put together, and we are so excited about this decade. Do you have the name of the website yet? Will you be when will you be able to share that? The name of the website is melpender.com. That's easy. melpender.com. Right. Yes. Okay. Got it. And and, yeah, and they can go to it. I I want to thank everybody that's viewing this program right now because you're welcome to go to the website and navigate your way through. There's videos um, you can see Melvin speaking. We've got a YouTube channel. Um, there's speeches that he's given. There's there's newspaper articles that were written on Melvin. Um, it's 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 very exciting. And you can also see me running. And and you can also see see how, how what kind of shape I was in. I had a beautiful body back then. I'm oh my you. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I have to say, I have to tell you something. Is that because you went from you know, you, I, I read your biography. I mean, you started extremely young. And then I'm like, how do you, you go to the military and be like, you know what? I think I'm just going to go to the Olympics. You know, I'll just start a business. I mean, that, it, that, it's it, obviously there's a lot we're missing in the middle. So I'm sure that this book is going to, is going to describe all of that. But I'd like to ask um, your wife something. Yes. So in this journey, obviously, as, um, an African American, a Black American, and but for you to see what your your husband, your counterpart, your partner at the time before marriage, to see the difference of the treatment of when people see biracial couples together, and or just Black, I'm biracial. I mean, it it must have affected you in some way where it, it changed you in a sense. Well, you know, I was married before, and I have three beautiful biracial children. So I have been um, very connected to the black community for a long period of time. And I experienced a lot of racism in my younger years. So I knew that um, that was part of the equation. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't frightened of it. I just, it's almost like I just blow it off. I don't get hooked into it. I don't. Uh, you know, people can manifest evil in any aspect, but if you walk with love in your heart and the love of God, that overcomes all that evil. So we just stick together like glue and <laughs> don't let it affect us. And, uh, you know, I, I was I was married to Hispanic, too. I have two beautiful children, two gorgeous children, And uh, be before David and I got married. And, um, you know, I could see it then, too. Uh, but it never bothered me. I, you know, I, I would laugh at people because I know how good we look. You know, <laughs> you know we, we have beautiful children. I mean, we walk down the street and people want to stop and tell, always tell them how beautiful our children were. And um, I, I'm educated. I'm, you know, I, I'm an educated man too. And I, and I know, and I had to work hard to get my education. I mean, it's in the book. I had to travel 50 miles one way from West Point to Staten, Staten Island, also to Long Island to finish my degree at Delphi University. Two days a week after practice, you know. I, I, you know, like I'm saying, we leave a lot of stuff out, you know, out of the book because we want you to read. We want it. you to read the book. <laughs> but if you see, I travel 50 miles, maybe maybe it further than that, from West Point Military Academy in the winter time, and the snow, Palisade Parkway was sometimes closed down. We had to take alternate routes to get back to the to, to the West Point. Um, there's a lot of things in there that that we, you know we can't tell you everything about it because it takes too long to do that. But it's, it's things in there that you'll see that, how did he do that? You know, how, how did he do that? You know, and relationships and marriages, you know, is there too. Uh, I always wanted to have a, a beautiful wife and a beautiful home, a beautiful car. I would see these things and I used to carry, I used to carry golf bags to make I money. I saw that it, in your story. <laughs> yes, and, and make $5 for 18 holes. You know, you've got that four or five hours out there making $5 and, and sometimes you carry two bags, and I'm just a little guy, you know, I want a big guy, but make that, say, $10 if I had two bags was a lot of money back then. But it was a thing where, you know, it's, it, 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 the things about me is that I never gave up. And, and I tell let the kids, I, I, I never, never say you can't. And I've been in a situation where I just wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. But I never would give up. You know, I had people say things to me, things like having to be at West Point, things like having to be with my mother when I would take her to the doctor, you know, like back in the 
you know, back when I was a kid, you know, I would go to the movie and take my little girlfriend and have to ride on the back of the bus. And I mean, little things, I can go on and go on and go on. I think a lot of that is in the book. Right. And the school and the school I had to go to, you'd be surprised at the school they had for blacks and the community that I lived in. It was unbelievable. You know, one, when I first moved here from Dalton, Georgia, we went to a school, it was beautiful in Dalton. Moved down to Atlanta, DeKalb County. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to go two classes in one classroom and it wouldn't give us a bus to get to school. I mean, then they built this long building out of cement blocks with no water, running water, little pot belly stove to keep warm and an outdoor toilet about 50 meters from the school. Right. And all the hand -me books, hand-me-downs from the white school. All the football gear we had when we had a little football team wasn't that great, but to play football, they, just to get that equipment when I was a kid growing up, it was like a miracle. Just to get it, to get out there and go play football. So you can show out in front of the girls, you know how that is. But, uh, you know, it was a <laughs> yeah, you know, to put on that football uniform and go play football and all the girls, Chile was out there, blah, 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 blah. And, and we only had about six games. But to us, that was that was great for us. That's all we had. And uh, but these things I'm telling you is the things that made me strong. It made me want to better myself. It won't make me to be the best I could be. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say anything about the 1968 games. You know, when John Carlson and Tommy Smith put the put the uh, uh, they won the Black Power, so they said it's it, the Black Power salute. It, it wasn't that. It's called the Silent Jester. People got that all wrong. With Tommy, Tommy Smith and John Carlos was trying to say the things I'm saying now. We are human beings. We are people. We are people. Okay? And, and, and we go over there and win all these gold medals to represent our country. We come home and be treated like I was by taking my mother to, you know, to the doctor and, 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 and things like that. I mean, it, it's amazing. And they were crucified for that. Mm. Wow. So where can okay. everybody actually find your book? They find you. Well, I have on the screen so everyone can see. Although all of you who are listening on your podcast obviously can't see this. But, of course, if you're listening, um, you can be looking out for the website and connect with Mel Pender at melpender.com. Um, and then you're talking about helping to um, youth or organizing things for the youth, the military initiative, the relay team. But your book is what really is going to tell it all, right? Yes. And they can buy it. And they can buy it on the website. You can go right on the website and just click on Amazon and you can get it. Um, and, and, you know, I, like I said, I didn't say much about the, about the my first one with the games either, but uh, it's all in there. How, how they, things that happened there also, but uh, where well, you see me laying on the ground there. Um, I don't know where you see that picture or not. Yeah. But uh, yes. uh, that was another uh, kind of a racial thing in 1964. You know, I was number two behind Bob Hayes in the world. Uh, Bob Hayes, Bob Hayes with the uh, Florida a and he was the fastest guy in the world played for the Dallas Cowboys. And um, oh. they, right, okay, yeah, his one coach wanted to have this white kid on the relay team because mm -hmm. he coached him. And it was some things happened there that, you, you know, um, it was kind of heartbreaking. He, trying to get me and, and uh, this other black guy, Trent Jackson, the top three spinners in the world back then, just to get him on the team, they want to take one of us off. Really? So, um, I mean, just little things, you know, I can go on and go on and go on. And, and just because of, you know, the color of, of uh, my skin. But you can read it all in the book, you know, just, just the book. I, 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 want, I, want, I want you to get the book and, and see, uh, just see uh, what a great job my wife did uh, in putting it together. And that would be Expressions of Hope, correct? Yes, the male pender story, the expression of hope, the male pender story. I, 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 sorry you can't pull it up on the screen there. Um, maybe Arlene, if she's listening, maybe she can she can put it up there. But uh, it, uh, it's easy to find. If you Google me or Wikipedia, you'll read for days. <laughs> and it's right there on Wikipedia also, and also uh, Google. So all of you who are listening on the podcast, and in case you want to, again, find Mel Pender, you can actually also find him on Facebook, as well as, of course, their website coming up, melpender.com, and as well as you can get his book, Expressions of Hope, right there on the screen. <coughs> you can see a, a picture of him and as well as the book. So if you have any questions or anything like that, um, thank you so much, though, for taking the time with us today. We don't want to take all your time out of the day. Um, but we really appreciate the time in the interview. And then we do hope, actually, when you get your website up, that we can get you back on 
to promote the stuff on your website and really maneuver everyone through it and kind of show them everything on our platform. Great, great. Uh, <coughs> another thing, uh, my wife and I are going to Tokyo uh, for the for the Olympics uh, uh, this year. Oh wow! Uh, I've been sponsored by uh, a family there, but uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be great to go back to Tokyo after so many years. You know, it's been what fifty five years now. Mm -hmm. uh, long. It's going to be uh, different. Uh, the nineteen sixty four <laughs> games. Yeah. You know. But I didn't, you know, I, first I didn't tell you this. I didn't want to try until I was 25 years old. Yeah, I was wondering how that transition I was occurred. When I was my first try to do that at a late age and, and to do the things that I, 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 I was wondering how that actually Amen. occurred from military to just running track. Well, it's like you don't just get up one day and run track, right? Well, you know, in, in military, we had, we had uh, sports teams, and I was I was the fastest guy on a football team, and that's how I got discovered. <laughs> I think I, I, I don't know what I told you that or not. No, you didn't. <laughs> I was the fastest guy on a football team, and the Japanese team came over from Osaka, Japan, to train for the 1964 games. Yeah. And there were some Americans to participate, and I was the fastest guy, and I beat the best sprinter that was done competing in the Japan Olympics. That's how I started. You know, it, it was amazing. I had schools like UCLA, Southern Carroll, Fresno State. All these schools after me to go to college to get out of the military because I ran nine five and hundred back then. Mm -hmm. So, but I chose to stay in the military and uh, finish my career. I played pro football too. I turned on contract pro football uh, to stay in the military. Oh my gosh! I mean, you're just really you're all, you're just doing it all, Mr. Mender. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, that's why you should be. That's why you got to read the book. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot obviously that we're gonna we're, that we're missing if we don't read the book, and I, I get it. You don't want to give it all away because then you know that tells it all. Then why buy the book, right? So of course, right. yeah. It, Just go to mailpender.com. Mailpender.com, and you can get that book, and and then you can write a review on it too. I love that. I love to have that done. Uh, I, I'm so proud of my wife the way she did, the way she did, the way she put the book together, and. Uh, and it, it, it's amazing. She, she, after she wrote my book, some lady read the book and then asked my wife to help her with her book. And oh. she got another lady wanted to help her with her book. So, <laughs> you know, it's amazing uh, how that happened. Well, thank you again for um, really being a part of our show. I, I really appreciate it because we've been waiting for you a while, as you know, because we, uh, you know, we know we couldn't get you the month before last because you were really um, tied up and busy. And so we're glad that you were able to make it to the um, show today, to the live show. So to um, all of our listeners who are listening on the live podcasts that are out there, um, one of your very favorite podcasts, whether it's iHeart, Apple, Spotify, um, you know, this is Mr. Mel Pender, um, 1968, um, gold medalist, um, he's been in the military, from being an entrepreneur to an, uh, an author, and obviously helping with the youth in the military today. So obviously you're still got a lot of energy to keep it going. You know, we want you to look him up, look at his, look for his book on Amazon, go to the website and um, Expressions of Hope. If you get lost and forget where that is, just visit our webpage, entrepreneurlife.show. You will see the live interview. You will see the live interview on YouTube. You can listen again on all your favorite podcasts to replay. Is there anything you want to say before we close out the day? I want to thank you very much for having me on your show and thank Alina Richardson for her super, super help. I, I You know, it's, this couldn't happen without her. Yes. Uh, she's a very wonderful in, in putting this together and helping me with my future. Yeah, and we and, and we were kind of a little disappointed, I guess you'd say, that when we really wanted you on, but we understood that you have to miss the last time. So we do want you to come back when you actually are able to, um, are able to, you know, when you get your website up, because we really want to get that promoted and get it out there, because we want to we want to see it too. So well, right now, you can, you can click, click on it right now. Now it's up. Oh, awesome! Okay, so everyone can go to Mel. Pender.com. That is up right now. Perfect. And thank you so much. Have a really wonderful weekend, Saturday. No, I'm going to for a moment. Thank you again. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Bye. And thanks for Bye, listening. Thank you.
Thanks for listening, everybody, to the show. We appreciate it. Mel Pender's going to exit. And um, we hope that you guys have a really wonderful week. Bye now. Bye. This is the book. Oh, that's a great book. Thanks for finally showing it. Yes, that's, that's a great book. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.